Hello, and welcome to the Skyline View podcast. I'm John Harrison. It's National Sleep Awareness Week, and in today's episode we'll be discussing the importance of sleep for college students, what causes less than ideal sleeping habits, and some helpful tips on how to get a good night's sleep. It's been one year since Skyline College shut its doors due to the COVID-19 pandemic and one year since online classes became a lifeline to higher education. With the recent announcement that the San Mateo Community College District would be extending distance learning for the summer and fall of 2021, it looks like, at least for the time being, that students will be staring at their screens until winter break. As the hours in front of our phones, computers, and televisions continue to pass, keep in mind this piece of ancient wisdom from Homer's Odyssey. There is a time for many words, and there is also a time for sleep. Today, I'm speaking with Emily Risk from the Skyline College Health Center about the tenuous relationship between students and sleep. Emily, before we start, just wanted to ask, did you get a good night's sleep last night? I did, actually. I've been working on it. Good. Would you mind just saying a bit about who you are and what you do at Skyline? Sure. Sure. I am a nurse working in the health center part-time at Skyline. I work on Thursdays and Fridays, and I've been at the Skyline Health Center for over 12 years. I'm going on 13 years, 13 or 14 years now. So it's been a while. I've seen a lot of change, and I love it. I love the students, and I am very much missing them right now. But we are seeing students right now virtually. So you can make an appointment with any of the healthcare providers. We're open from nine until six, Monday through Thursday. And on Friday, it's nine until one. And you can just visit our health center website and they'll have all of our emails and you can email any of the providers that you would like to see. Or if it's a specific day you want to be seen on, then email the provider that's listed for that specific day. That is the scoop for the health center right now. There's also an awesome new program called Skyline Talk Now, and that is for mental health services that are available 24 seven. I'm pumping this because we started it right now and I think there's a great need and I really hope that students access it. Thank you for mentioning those. I wanna talk a little bit about, like I said, sleeping patterns and that sort of thing. Why would it be important for students to establish healthy sleeping habits? Well, specifically for students for learning. Healthy sleep habits, and that's getting between seven to nine hours of sleep every night on a regular schedule is what's ideal, really lends itself to learning, retaining memories, and making memory connections. And so that's why sleep is particularly important. And I think as students, you kind of think, I'm young, I can catch up on my sleep on the weekend, and I can stay up late studying, or I can wake up early and study. And both of those choices will actually hurt you hurt your studying. So I'll give you some examples of that. So let's say you're you're reading on an electronic device, let's say your iPhone or your computer or your TV. And a lot, many of us do this, especially in bed, we'll have the device, we're reading it, and it's really close to our face. And what's being admitted is blue light. And what that does, it decreases the amount of melatonin that is released in your brain. And this chemical, this hormone is super important because it's what's telling your body it's time for bed. So that's what it's shouting. It doesn't keep you asleep, but it tells your body, hey, it's time to go to sleep. And typically this would happen with hunters and gatherers before we had electricity. This would happen at dusk. Your body would start ramping up your level of melatonin. It would get to its peak around 4 a.m. and then it would taper off and be really low and undetectable by around dawn when people would get up. So these days we kind of mess with it by all of our artificial light. So it really, any artificial light tends to mess with this melatonin. So it's something to be conscious over, but particularly electronic devices are problematic because it's the short wavelengths, which are the blue light wavelengths that really tell the melatonin that it is daytime. So there are uh, blue light filter glasses, that sort of thing, and computer screens that have blue light filters built into them. I I imagine you'd recommend doing that sort of thing? Absolutely. Blue light blockers are great. I have all my kids wear them. I absolutely suggest them to patients, students that come in and see me when they're having trouble sleeping and just in general, because one of the things that I talk about is sleep. When I see any patients, we talk about sleep, diet, exercise, and stress. And really, if you had any one of those to target, you're like, I don't have bandwidth for all of these things. Pick sleep because sleep 
will help you with all the others. So yes, you can get these glasses on Amazon. I think they have them in clear now, but the ones that I have and my kids have, have kind of an orange tint. And what that does is it blocks a great deal of the blue light that's coming in from just our regular LED lights in the house, which are the worst. The incandescent are better because they're less blue light emitting, but it slows that down. And then there's apps like Flux you can get on your computer and you can set your smartphones to have a nighttime shift. And what that does is it, it warms the color of the phone. So it's kind of got an orangey tinge and that again, decreases the amount of blue light that's going into your eyes. Also your nightlight, really, even if it's a dim nightlight, it emits the blue light that keeps you from sleeping. So I would highly recommend when it starts getting dark, just to throw on those glasses if you're home and they ha don't have a prescription in them. You can get them with a prescription in them, but they don't have to either, especially if you're reading Kindles or electronic books and you feel like you have to read them late at night. So I would definitely get those glasses. Well, those, Do you use those any of these products? I don't. Oh, well, actually, no, that's not true. My computer monitor at home does have a blue light filter and I do use it regularly. So that is definitely something that I invested in. It's really come through for me. I, I feel like my eyes are much less tired after looking at a screen day after day for hours at a time, which yeah. I'm, I'm sure that's is what a, we're doing now. Yeah, exactly. Like I've, everyone well, or at least all of the students at, well, not all of the students at Skyline because there are still classes being held on campus, but a vast majority of the students who are taking courses at Skyline are encountering problems like these. And those yeah. are really great tips. Do, do you have any more? So another one I put in, I switched the light bulbs in my house for the lights we have on the bedside tables. They're ones that are blue blocking. And so they they look like a regular light bulb and you just turn them in and it's a warmer glow. It's not as bright and harsh and they make falling asleep easier as well. So what I'll tell you is avoiding electronics at least one to two hours before you wanna to go to sleep, installing the apps we talked about, keeping to a regular sleep schedule is super important. So that means not changing your schedule on the weekend. So every day getting up and going to bed at the same time, our body really wants to be on a regular circadian rhythm. And so when you flip it out, it's kind of like jet lag. You don't feel good, you feel kind of hungover. And not great. So another huge one is keeping your room dark and cool. In order for their, us to fall asleep, our body temperature needs to decrease by two to three degrees. So setting your thermostat at night when you go to bed to 65 is a great temperature and keeping it there all night. And that will ensure that the room doesn't get too warm and your body heats up and that will again, wake you up. So a quick trick with this is taking a shower before you're gonna go to bed, a hot shower. Because, and you think maybe not, I'm raising my body temperature, but what happens when you get out of the shower is your body, your core body temperature decreases because it's trying to keep you warm. So the heat is going out to your limbs and then into the environment. And so that decreases your core temperature, making it much easier to fall asleep. So that's a, a tip I tell people. Also keeping it dark is huge. So if you can pull off blackout shades in your room, that is a great idea. If you can't, a sleep mask, those little masks that you just put over your eyes, I would do that. We have those for everybody in this house too. Sleep is very important to me because it also helps with your well being and not only just your memory and your thinking and your learning, but your emotional state is very tied to the amount of sleep that you get and getting quality sleep is really important with that. Back to things you can do, getting regular exercise helps. And then if you're still finding you're having trouble, if you can get up and within the first 30 minutes of you getting up, go outside, get some early morning sunlight into your eyes, resets that circadian rhythm. So like we have chickens here, so they get up with the sunrise. So that's what we do. We go and let the chickens out. So that's kind of a force function over here. Not everybody's got chickens. I love that you have chickens. I, I it, that was a, that was a quarantine pet for us over here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so regular exercise, watch what you eat and drink before if you're having trouble sleeping. So no caffeinated beverages after noon would be my suggestion to you. Some people are more sensitive than others as it comes to caffeine, how quickly their body processes it. But as a general rule, I would suggest no caffeinated beverages afternoon. And then alcohol, some people think that drinking alcohol before bed helps them get to sleep and it will help you fall asleep, but you do not stay asleep and the quality of your sleep is compromised when you drink alcohol before you go to sleep. So I don't recommend it because of those reasons. And then having a heavy meal and then going to bed right away also 
causes some trouble with sleeping. So typically lighter meals in the evening is a healthy choice and it will also help you with your sleep as well. And naps come up a lot with this question and I would avoid napping. If you Mm -hmm. have to nap, then I would nap for less than 30 minutes and have it in the earlier part of the day because sometimes you just need a nap, but make it, make it short the long hour and a half naps are like mini sleeps and then they can make it hard for you to fall asleep at the end of your day. And I was reading this book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, which I highly recommend. And then Sanjay Gupta also just had a sleep, keeping it sharp. It's about keeping your brain sharp. But let me tell you, there is a lot, a lot of stuff. He focuses on sleep so much mm-hmm. in this book on and just keeping your brain sharp. And that is what students, I mean, that's what we want, right? We want to keep our brain sharp so we can learn, so we can graduate, so we can move on in this world. And without sleep, it's real hard to do that because we need it. I fully 120% agree with you. I, I often find myself not getting as much sleep as I want or need, but hopefully with these tips that you've provided, I can maybe uh, kickstart that and get better at it. Yeah, I think that would be great. I watched this one interviewer who was reviewing Matthew Walker's book, and he had a really good analogy that I love. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for our student population. Because the way he put it, he said, the first part of sleep is your deep sleep. In this part, you're learning things all day long and they're being stored in the part of your brain called the hippocampus. So you're filling it with facts all day long, new word problems, teacher's names, where you parked your car. Any of these facts are stored in here, it's temporary. And then during that light sleep is when all of that is cleared out so then it's, it's taking, let's say it's taking the mail from the mailbox and it's delivering to the houses. So now that area is clear. And then in the dream sleep is when it's taking the memories that you have stored before and then your new memories and it's making connections. And that's when you wake up with that, aha, I have an idea. I figured something out. And that is the time. That's, so that is the morning sleep that you'll find both the greater portions of the dream sleep otherwise known as REM sleep, as well as the light sleep, they're greatest in that morning time. So you don't really want to wake up early because then you are setting yourself back potentially emotionally and for making those more important connections with the facts that you are putting together just to make sense of all of what you're learning. And then to go back to why you don't want to watch Netflix till three in the morning is because you just won't have that deep sleep where you're able to put your memories that you've learned into long-term memory. So that's uh, that's problematic. And we've all been there where we've read the same passage of the same thing over and over again, and it's just not going in there. You're like, oh my God, I'm gonna read that again. And that is happening after a day of collecting facts in your hippocampus and you're full. And so there's no more going in there. So it's really important that you have that time to clear it out so that the next day's learning can happen. So as students, I think it's paramount to wrap your head around that idea. And I would, I would hope that students would find it a motivating factor to make sleep a priority, knowing the connection it has directly to their learning and memory and retention of making facts, of keeping facts and making connections. That's why I, I love that example. Well, thank you for sharing. Really appreciate mm-hmm. that. Well, don't want to take up too much of your time unless there's anything else you want to add really quick that you wanted to say before we wrap this up. I'll say like, give it a shot. And if you need any help, then you can definitely, you're more than welcome to. And we encourage you to reach out to any of the providers at the health center. And we're happy to work with you on your specific sleep problems or any other issues you have. We are here for you. Many thanks to our guest, Emily Risk, for joining us today, uh, and thanks to our listeners. We here at the Skyline View would love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. How do you sleep at night? Glass of warm milk? Counting sheep? Aromatherapy? Visit us at theskylineview.com and let us know. Until next time.